Joe's Farm and today I have a video to show you how to wallpaper a room, quote unquote wallpaper, without using wallpaper. This is a technique that is really good if you are in a rent house where you're not allowed to permanently alter anything because all it involves is liquid starch and fabric. So when you go to remove it, all you need is water and use like on a, in a spray bottle and you can just spritz it down until it gets wet enough and then you can peel it off. A warning before we start, sometimes when you're removing it, it will remove some of the paint depending on how the paint was done underneath of it. You obviously don't want to put this over wallpaper because uh, again, you're, you'll be reusing it water to remove it and so it will damage the wallpaper. It works fine over paneling. I have used it on paneling. I have used it on just regular latex painted walls. I'm trying to remember where else I've used it. That's mostly the, most of the primary place I've used it is latex walls. I went ahead and did one section of it because it's been a while since I did this. Uh, when my kids were little, this was awesome because you could do something easily using uh, bed sheets that match whatever uh, comforter sets and stuff that you might have in your kid's room. You can use uh, sheet, bed sheets are probably the, the best thing, especially if you're doing a kid's room and you want to do the whole room because you can find them cheaper. My daughter had a Cinderella bedroom when she was, my oldest daughter, when she was, I don't know, two or three. And I did have to change up what I wanted initially because I wanted, I had to keep the sheets at about five dollars. She had a pretty big room, so I needed, I don't know, I used a lot of sheets. I can't remember how many. I wish I could remember. You can, you can sort of get the the measurements of the sheets and your measurements of your walls, and you can figure out how many you need. In this room, I'm just, this is my sewing room, and it's pink, of course. And I'm doing, I'm a 70s girl, I'm a little girl during the 70s, and Holly Hobby was huge. My dad was a pastor and we traveled a lot, so I never got to really decorate a room the way I wanted to. So I always wanted a Holly Hobby room, so that's what I'm getting. I'm doing just this one wall, and I don't know if you remember back when we were fixing things up, but this one wall had a lot of cracks. I think this used to be like a mud room to the carport. And they, um, at some point, walled in the carport and made it the laundry room. Uh, so, and then I think this was sort of like a mudroom storage room, which then they cut a hole into the main house and made it into just a little room. So it's just a really tiny room, probably nine by nine, maybe. It's almost a perfect square. And so I just have this one wall. All the, the whole house had paneling when we, before we gutted it all. If you've watched all my videos, you know we told all those walls away. And we replaced it all with drywall. This wall, this room already had drywall, so we didn't have to do anything to this room. This one wall, I mean, the house was built in 52, so this one wall is pretty old, and there were just a lot of cracks. If you live in Texas or Oklahoma or down here, you know that we have a lot of ground settling. It's just the way things are, and you're, you're going to end up with cracks. It just happens. So it, rather than, I patched it before I painted it, but I was just looking at it and I thought, you know, I'm just going to do a fabric treatment on that one wall. It would be like an accent wall and I can do whatever I want because if I don't like it later on in life, I can just remove it because I'm going to use the fabric. So what you want is a cotton, if possible. Cotton polyester blend will work. Cotton is going to work the best because of the way it absorbs the liquid starch. Measure your wall first. I measured and this wall was about seven foot nine inches and I'm tucking it under my molding and, and I'm going to leave because your, your fabric when it's wet will stretch. So when it, as it dries it's going to have a little bit of shrinkage and again it's going to depend on the cotton and the, the, the fiber content in your sheets. But to be on the safe side, I would leave two or three inches longer than what you need and wider than what you need. And the reason being, as it shrinks, when it's completely dry, you can come in here with a scissors or a knife and you can just trim away the dried excess. It, excess. It's a lot easier to cut after it's dry. And also, if you're doing, they make now, which is awesome, because when back when I was doing this in the early 2000s for my oldest daughter, they didn't make stick, stick um, self-adhesive removable molding like they do now. I had, the closest I could come to was like a plastic molding that actually had to be nailed on with like little finish nails. And then we did another room for her in a different house um, using a flannel. It was actually a cotton flannel. 
and I did a big flor floral room, sort of like a Eloise Wilkins children's illustration. I really wanted to do really pretty pink and flowers. And we We actually used molding and nailed it on there. Chris did all that. I'm not having to change out the baseboards in here. You will notice when I get to moving the camera around that there's stain on them and there's paint on them because the plan was to go around and um, repaint just the baseboards. But I don't have to replace them like in the other, the other parts of the house we're putting in a couple of new baseboards. But Chris already got the molding done in this room. I can go ahead and do this. But I've got one wall. Let me stand out of the way here. And like I said, I've cut it. Uh, about two inches longer than it needed to be and a, a little bit when you're fitting around a uh, window like I have. I've left a little bit over on the side in the corner because I'm, I'm just buttoned up against the corner and what I did was I folded under a lip of about an inch. That way if it totally shrinks more than I'm in intending for it over here around the windowsill, I can always, I hope I don't have to do this because it's work, but I can always re-moisten re this um, section with more starch and I can pull it over and I'll have a little bit left over. But I think I'm pretty safe. If you have a windowsill, you can tuck it up around there and it usually dries pretty good. So what you're going to do is you want either a rag or I had this large sponge and you just, all you do, you're not diluting this starch. You're pouring it straight from the bottle into the bucket. You can get this at Walmart. Uh, it used to be about $1.97 a bottle. I have no idea what it is now. It's probably $6 a bottle. It seems like these that I bought were like $3.97 or something like this. But I bought these before the pandemic because it's been sitting here waiting for me to finish. We've been trying to finish the, the stained floor. We're done with the floors. This one's a mess in here because of all the... I put down these paint cloths and it was like dry, dry um, drywall and all kinds of stuff on here. So I'm going to have to remop this room when I'm done. But you want to put something on the ground, especially if you have carpet, because the starch does get all on stuff. It's like water, so it drips. It cleans up really easy, but it's cleanup. So if you want to minimize, you know, all the work you have to do. So cut your the length that you need. Um, and because I'm working around a window, I don't you don't cut it out yet. Just hang the length. You're going to need tacks, or um, I couldn't find my tacks, so I ended up using a staple gun. And you don't want it, you don't have to do like a thousand up there. I did three just to sort of take the weight when you initially put it on there. It will adhere to the wall really quickly. I mean, it doesn't dry like glue, like you can't remove it, but it sticks. I mean, it's wet and it's, it's tacky. And then you, using the, the um, moistened sponge that has also has the liquid starch on it, you can just sort of work out those bubbles. You can lift it a little bit, push out the bubbles to the end. When you're doing a pattern sheet, remember that just like wallpaper, you have to match the pattern. So you're probably going to need whatever you figure uh, measurement-wise, you'll probably need one at least one extra. Because if you're doing a whole room, you're going to have to be uh, matching that pattern. And if you're doing like a solid color, that's going to be great because you have nothing to match. If you're doing dots, something like that, where there's no actual matching of a pattern, it's going to be great. But I'm doing, as you can see, it's got, it's gingham, pink and white gingham with the holly hobbies all over it. So I'm going to have to find on my next piece of fabric the uh, same holly hobby in, in overlap, just like you would if you're doing wallpaper. So I have the one piece up there. And you want to use as few pieces as possible. And that's why when I hung this up initially, I didn't cut out the window until it was all the way, I, I, it was obvious where it was on the wall. I got it on the wall and then, so this part was like up. And you're going to see when we're going to do this other piece. And so then after I got all this stuff on really good over here, I went around and cut. And I did cut two or three times because I wanted to keep leaving it extra. Um, so that's what we did as I went around. So let me go ahead and moisten the other piece. And I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm just going to let you watch me do it because it's very simple. And I can't stress enough how easy this is. 
So I'm using these vintage Holly Hobby um, sheets, and as you cut pieces off, the like the I have these little pieces, save them because you never know when you're gonna accidentally cut a sliver and instead of having to redo the whole thing, you might be able to patch it with a little bit of the fabric. So that's you know a good little tip there. You can also save that and use a, a wall plate if you want to make matching ones to if you're doing like a whole room or something. And you can just take off that plastic wall plate and use the same thing. Just use the liquid starch and, and slick it on that plastic wall plate. Let it dry and you can trim the, the excess off um, from the back. You want to leave enough to tuck under. But So that's something else you can do with your remnants. So I'm going to get over here and I'm going to try to match this piece. Um, I'm probably going to have to see if I can, I'll be lucky if, if the sheet's wide enough to do an overlap. Because I was using the vintage, sometimes you have to get creative. And some of these were, it was all made out of the same fabric. Some of them were curtains. Some of them were, have a bedspread. And I think there was maybe even a pillow or two, but whatever I could find with the fabric is what I had to buy. It's sort of, I, I cut it, cut all the trim off and I ironed it, washed it and ironed it. So if you want to do that with your sheets, if they're new, go ahead and wash them so they'll shrink, dry them, iron everything. I know a lot of people don't like to iron, but it's important that it's nice and smooth and ready to go on the wall. It's just going to save you so much trouble. So let's go ahead and see if we have a good piece to match over here. Okay, this looks like it's my longest piece, so I'm going to leave this for over here. If you're buying, like I said, if you're using bed sheets, that are new, you're not going to have to do this piecemeal sort of situation like I am because I am dealing with, like I said, all these unusual pieces here. All right, so I've identified where on the fabric I'm going to need to match up to overlap the pattern. And like I said, always err on the side of um, too big rather than too small because it's easier to cut than to patch. So. I mean, you can patch, it's pretty forgiving, and that's the great thing about this, if you have to patch it, um, to patch over it, and you'd be surprised at how well it dries. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up the pattern and cutting again. Stages too, if you only get half of it done, you can come back and it doesn't hurt it to do it in different, you know, you're just gonna re-moisten the area that you're working on and, and go with it. So it works good if you got kids and you can't, you know, just sit there and work for hours on end. Okay, I'm gonna stick it in my start here. When you're buying the liquid starch, here's a tip. I did this um, on one of the rooms I was working on, I don't remember which one it was. Um, make sure you check the liquid starch looks a lot like the liquid fabric softener and liquid fabric softener doesn't do anything it has to be the starch so make sure when you're buying it you look and make sure it says liquid starch not liquid fabric softener i just thought of that <laughs> i had bought several gallons of liquid fabric softeners but it ended up but that's okay because i ended up using that for another project but um but you might not want to use it for another project, so just make sure you check it there. Okay, I'm going to line up. This Holly Hobby seems to be the prominent one on the design that everyone's going to see. So I'm trying to work with that. I'm also trying to have to not tack this one up, but you not get so lucky. Sometimes you can just stick it on the wall while you're working with it. Depends on the weight of your fabric. Alright, and also part of this is knowing when to just be done. Uh, you're never probably going to get every wrinkle and every bubble out. Just work on the big areas and the areas that are the most visible. If they're down along the bottom, or if you know a piece of furniture is going to be sitting in front of something, 
or you know you're going to be putting trim or something over a part of it. Uh, just learn to live with some imperfection because the more you mess with it, you mess up the good areas. So just learn to walk away at this. Make sure you wring out your fabric. You don't want it. The weight of the liquid will pull it off. So you don't want it. You don't want it dry, but you don't want it just pouring pouring the starch either. So you sort of have to find the happy medium. You can also use, if you watched my video on how to recover a dividing screen or privacy screen, you can also use the GIMP braid and a staple gun or a hot glue gun even and cover the edges if you don't want to mess with getting the edges just perfect. That will also work. But it takes away from the more wallpaper look at that point and makes it more into like um, looks like you have uh, like from the 90s the, the, the padded the padded fabric treatment on the wall with a big dill okay where my problem has I run into is um, right here around the window and I'm really trying to work it up against the window frame so it can sort of be camouflaged by the um, distraction of the window frame here. And I'm trying to work this wrinkle down. So what I had to do is the Holly Hobby I originally left on there to match things with, the blue was just so bold underneath the print that I had to go under there and trim some of that off. I'm trying to decide if, if that is good enough for me at this point, or do I want to continue messing with it. The more you mess with it, the more you risk messing up the rest of the stuff that looks good. So you have to sort of decide, well, all of this looks good, but this one part doesn't. And you got to decide when to walk away. So I'm deciding that right now. So I got the last piece patch. Let's see if I can get a little closer here. I concentrated, I was sort of in between girls there. So I think I did a pretty good job. It, the double flower sort of happened, but I was able to patch Holly Hobby seam. The, that blue really pops the most. So those were the ones I was focusing on rather than the other two girls. So I thought I did a pretty good job of matching the Holly Hobby there. And then I had to sort of make a double flower right there. but. I got it done. We had the little bit of a patch down down here in the corner. Remember, because my piece was too long, I mean too short, um, so I picked the spot that I felt was going to be covered up the most by furniture, and it's probably down in that corner. It's not too noticeable when you look at it. When you get all the way out here, some of those things aren't that noticeable that I was calling attention to because the pattern overwhelms the mistakes so to speak i don't think they're more mistakes like happy little mistakes like bob ross used to say i think they're more imperfections you just can't be absolutely perfect the part i'm the most not happy about that i wish could have been a little bit better was this center seam right here you can sort of see i kept trimming underneath trying to trim that holly hobby away that's under there but unfortunately the the piece that i cut to overlap i cut too short so I had to leave the holly hobby under there. I did it as close as I could and as you can see some of the edges are sort of jagged. Also when it dries um, will be darker and a lot less noticeable. We'll come back and look at this when it's all dry and when I have it trimmed and hopefully have the curtains up and it will look a lot better because like I said as it dries it darkens it shrinks and some of the imperfections like the littler wrinkles the littler bubbles just you just won't see utility knife I trimmed the edges that were overlapping the wall over here over here I managed to fold it nice enough that I didn't have to cut 
I trimmed around the window sill. I have a few places on the window sill I need to touch up with white paint. And obviously I have not repainted the, after we stained, I have not repainted these baseboards yet. So it'll look a lot better once I get that done. But I have the wall done and the curtains up. Wall fabric treatment using undiluted liquid starch. And it came out good. Let me see if I can get up. You can see there's a few bubbles, but nothing nothing really bad. I, I'm happy with it. Um, I had the little bit of problem here with the overlay, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And um, these curtains were in my uh, oldest daughter's nursery when 24, almost 25 years ago. They had a matching canopy crib and then they had bed curtains and that was the whole nine yards. Anyway, I bought them from JCPenney's and I paid a fortune for them. So I have been using them and reusing them. She also had them in a couple different bedrooms and so they live again. So I'm, I'm really happy. I need to put some, what I normally do is stick some like fiber fill in the poof parts here, fill them out. I might need to do a couple stitches on that one. It's like looking a little sad there. Some It has these plastic rings in the back and it gathers them up and some of the rings have broke. But easily fixed with a couple stitches. Anyway, so this has been uh, Canterbury Trails Farm with using liquid starch to do a removable wall treatment. And like I said, if I was ready to peel this off, I would just wet it down and peel off the fabric. And you can just wash the fabric and then you can use the fabric over to eco-friendly and budget-friendly. And you can do it in a place that you normally can't wallpaper or paint if you're renting or military base or you have to move or, um, soon or apartment or whatever where you can't alter the walls. Also dorms, it works good in dorms too. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you some ideas to decorate your house as well. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>